Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And afterward I feel regretful for being frantic. Like for what reason am I being unsympathetic to whatever it is going through? Stephanie said. Disregard Everett. Disregard Everett's concerns. Sweetheart, this is the point at which you absolutely ought to contemplate yourself and dealing with yourself. Furthermore, you're not kidding, Julie said. Julie came clean with Stephanie that when was out, she could rest on her loved ones. Chad strolled into the house. I thought you were stopping by tomorrow. Julie asked Chad. Chad let Stephanie know that he should investigate the children's redesigned room. Is presently a great time? Chad inquired. Julie pointed higher up, and she welcomed Chad to see it and afterward return first floor and audit texture samples with them. I can hardly stand by, Chad said with a smile. At the point when Chad got back from higher up, he let Julie know that the children would adore the redesigned room. Julie went to the kitchen to get snacks from a cooler, and Chad and Stephanie grinned obligingly at each other. The children should be restless to move back in here, Stephanie said. Chad noticed that the children were blissful at the Kiriaki Chateau with Maggie, however that they were anticipating moving back home. Any reports on Everett? Or then again would he say he is going by Bobby now? Chad inquired. Stephanie conceded that she had addressed Everett the earlier day about the requirement for another PR firm for the Observer. You can't leave us, Chad protested. Stephanie noticed that the circumstance was excessively off-kilter for her to work with Everett. You maintain that I should fire him? Again? Chad inquired. Stephanie said no, and she redirected the conversation to the house. Looks perfect. I clearly feel answerable for the fire. It makes me extremely upset that Doug and Julie needed to go through this, yet it didn't need to work out, Chad said. It wasn't your shortcoming, Stephanie focused. Chad clashed. Chad let Stephanie know that he had conversed with Abigail at her grave about the circumstance. God just understands what Clyde is going to do straight away, Chad said. Stephanie let Chad know that she trusted his encounter knows what his psyche. It did, Chad said. It's not your problem for what occurred. That's what you know, right? Stephanie inquired. Chad gestured yes. Stephanie noticed that the family was protected, and the house would be fixed soon. Your family minds to such an extent. Rest on us, Stephanie said. Chad said thanks to Stephanie, and he told her exactly the same thing. Julie got back with the sandwiches, however Stephanie pardoned herself to meet with her new client. After Stephanie left, Julie asked Chad what was off base. Please accept my apologies about the house. At the end of the day, it's all my issue, Chad said. Julie urged Chad to let his responsibility go, and she conceded that she had been inappropriate to fault him for even a second. Julie requested Chad to say, I'm not to fault for the fire. Chad rehashed the explanation. Chad let Julie know that he had apologized to Abigail at her gravesite. Julie embraced Chad. I'm in a battle, Julie, Chad admitted. Chad conceded that he once in a while felt like he was bombing his children. I miss her to such an extent. Constantly, Chad said before he separated in tears. Julie embraced Chad once more. We as a whole miss her. This isn't something you can do alone. Don't you know how the family loves you, upholds you and the kids? For what reason do you suppose I need to fabricate this house back up once more? Since it's something we as a whole have, a steady in our lives. It's an image. It implies family. It implies love. It implies trust, Julie said. Everett showed up at Marlena's office for his hypnotherapy arrangement, and he seemed apprehensive. I'm trusting we can get some clearness on your past, Marlena said. As a matter of fact, I think it was a slip-up coming here today, Everett said. Marlena motioned for Everett to sit down, and he did. There are a ton of misperceptions about hypnotherapy, Marlena began. 
at the point when Marlena inquired as to whether Everett had explored the subject, he said okay. I realize that I'll approach my through and through freedom and that I'll remember everything subsequently, Everett said. Marlena gestured yes. What we attempt to do is access portions of your memory that perhaps haven't been accessible to us, Marlena made sense of. That's what Everett admitted in spite of the fact that he was anxious to know reality, he feared what he would realize. That's what Marlena guaranteed assuming Everett was too awkward to even consider going on any time, she would stop the meeting. After a second, Everett consented to entrancing. Everett shut his eyes, and Marlena began. When Everett gave off an impression of being under, he discussed a memory with his mom, Helen. Inform me regarding your mom, Marlena said. Everett discussed Helen, and he grinned. Is there anything you might want to converse with her about? Anything you might want to ask her? Marlena said. Everett winced, then, at that point, glowered. Why'd you make it happen, mother? Everett said. Marlena let Everett know that he was protected. No. I'm not. I'm undependable, Everett said. To Everett, a variant of himself grinned naughtily. Everett shook his head vivaciously, terrified. Let me know how things are playing out, Marlena said. Nothing. Just haziness, Everett said. Marlena urged Everett to search for light. Everett snorted, and his breathing developed fast. I can't, Everett murmured. Marlena finished the meeting, and Everett woke up. You're here with me, and you're protected, Marlena said. Everett cleared a detach from his eye as Marlena inquired as to whether he had recalled that anything. Please accept my apologies. I don't have the foggiest idea, Everett said. Marlena got some information about the obscurity and his mom. Everett said the memory was fluffy. How would you feel now? Marlena inquired. Somewhat insecure, Everett conceded. Marlena let Everett know that they could manage the mind hindrance in the following meeting if Everett had any desire to proceed. Yeah. Without a doubt, Everett said. You let me know as to whether you have any recollections whatsoever, Marlena said. With a gesture indeed, Everett said he expected to get back to work. Everett said thanks to Marlena, and he speedily left the workplace and went to the bar. While Everett tasted on a beverage, Stephanie strolled in. After a second's faltering, Stephanie moved toward Everett's table. Hi. Need to sit? Everett inquired. Stephanie plunked down, and she inquired as to whether Everett was all right. I had my most memorable entrancing meeting today, Everett said. Stephanie got some information about it. Everett conceded he had seen something alarming. 